Good evening. <clears throat> Very honored to be here. You know, I grew up in this church. I used to run around crazy. People thought I was hyperactive. It's true. But anyway, um, before I bring the message, I want to give short testimony about something happened recently. Um, the devil did not want me to come here. Um, the past three weeks, I was struggling. He was attacking my mind, my spirit. Um, I know Bill, Tom, and Brandy, and Wanda, they've been planning this for a few months. They sent people informing them I'm coming to preach. And Wednesday, I called my probation officer, and I asked for my travel permission paper to come. And she told me she's not going to give it to me. She told me that she wasn't going to let me come here because I was in program team challenge. I wasn't able to pay what I owe them. So since that reason, she wasn't going to permit me to come. So I was very frustrated. I was worried, what am I going to do? They've been planning for me to come here. I was wondering, so I went in my bedroom and I sat and I got my phone and I was looking on Facebook and I saw um, a sermon by a pastor named Stephen Bertick. Maybe you don't know him, he's a new pastor, he's young. But he was talking about look again. And what does that mean, look again? He was saying that instead of looking at what you can see, look at what you can't see. You know, we always focus on the problem but we sometimes forget to focus on what he can do. Because he can do anything through, no matter what the situation, what the problem. So I was sitting and I was thinking, what am I going to do? I had owed them 1300 I had only 240 with me. So I felt something inside telling me, go to the courthouse. Give 240, see what you can do. But I still felt worried I'm not able to come. So I show up at the courthouse. I went through uh, the metal, see my body. As I was getting my things, I turn and look. My cousin Israel was standing there. He's a lawyer. Right now he's trying to help me get my license back, but he asked me, what am I doing at the courthouse? I explained my situation. So he told me he has a good friend at the probation office that owes him a favor because he gave him free game tickets. A little later, I found out his good friend is my probation officer's um, supervisor. So he called him and explain the situation. He informed him I paid 240, the next day I paid 220. But his uh, friend told my probation officer, go ahead, let me come here. So it's funny how the devil tried to <laughs> and stop me from coming here, but God had set up a plan for me to show up and see my cousin and work things out for me to be here with you today. So, I know, I know that the devil's afraid. He's afraid the same way he was when he found out Jesus rose again. Because he knows that God is working through us. He's using people to do his will, and he's scared of that. So, I I find it funny that he's tried hard, 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 hard to prevent me from coming here. So that makes me know that something big God has planned for today. Yeah. Who's it for? I'm not sure. Is it for one person, three people? It doesn't matter. But if one person feels the touch of God today, that's all that matters. That's what we're here for today. So. I want to uh, speak to you on uh, the chapter, um, the book Isaiah, chapter 53. Now, some of you may be wondering, usually you hear preaching about, you know, 
gospel with Jesus on the cross. You don't understand, but in that book, it talks about the future. It talks about what will happen, what's going to happen, and that is Jesus coming and being put on the cross. And just as I, for a short moment, forgot what God can do when I felt the block from coming here from probation, I put the title for this, Don't Forget. Don't forget. And you wonder, what do you mean, don't forget? Right now in this world, we've become comfortable. We stopped doing more than enough for Jesus. We feel we come to church, okay, pay tithe, good. I pray a little here, pray a little there. I'm doing enough. But are we really doing enough? You see the cross. That was more than enough. He did that for you. So for us to think we can come to church and be comfortable, sit, watch the pre preaching, and then go home, we're not doing enough. But I'm going to go ahead into my, my scripture. I'm going to read out of the message Bible. It's, it's more, uh, helps you more understand a little clearer than other kinds. But it says, who believes what we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? Now you wonder, what are they talking about? When Jesus came, he didn't look like a king. He didn't look beautiful like TV makes it seem. He looked like a regular person. Some people would say he looked almost like a homeless person. But that shows you that God was trying to work in a different way. It's easy for him to send his son in all his power and glory, and people to feel attracted to him. That would have been easy. Easy to believe. But walk with God isn't easy. It's hard. It's a faith walk. So he sent his son, looking just regular, to see how people would act with him. How they would treat him? Would they be nice to him? Would they hear him? So, as I go on, it says the servant grew up before God, very thin, like a small flower in a dry field. There was nothing beauty about him, nothing to make us look at him a second time. He was looked down on, passed by, a man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people were turned away. Now you think, wow, God <coughs> sent his son to come here and people hated him. Mm -hmm. They looked down on him. They passed him. Now one thing that made me think about is today's world. We see someone who doesn't look like they're doing good in life. Maybe someone without a home. Someone struggling. And we look at them and do we show love to them? Or do we walk by? not giving them a second look. Now in the Bible it says Jesus lives inside of us, right? So if we see someone that looks maybe homeless and we look away, shouldn't that mean we are looking away from Jesus? And that's what it's talking about. They looked at him with disgust and they turned away. They didn't know who he was. 
The truth is, he carried the weight of our pain. All our problems, everything wrong with us, we thought he did it, brought it himself. People thought the reason why Jesus was being put through all that was he was a sinner. But that wasn't true. He was pure. He was holy. He did no wrongs. He was perfect. But they thought he, he did something wrong. He sinned. That's why God's allowing him to go through all that. But it was our sins that put him on the cross. Our sins that made him get whipped, spit on, mocked. Our sins that crushed him. And he made us full through all his pain. We are healed. I want to use an example. You see the cross. <coughs> Many times you look at the cross, you know Jesus died. Many of us, we have a necklace, cross, that we have every day. I have every day. But how many times do we look at that cross we remember that he died for us on that cross and say thank you. It's not meant for fancy, look, it's beautiful. It's meant to remind us what he did for us. But do we look at it and say, thank you. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you for your sacrifice for me. myself. I'm not saying every day I see, I say thank you. I'm wrong also. But we're not perfect. We make mistakes. But we need to remember. We need to remember exactly what he went through for us. Yeah. Many of you saw the movie The Passion. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's not even close. That's not close. They said when they were finished with him, they couldn't recognize him anymore. His own mother couldn't recognize him anymore. They not only whipped his back, but his face. He had blood all over him. And he did it for us. How many of you can say that you would go through that for someone else? I can't say that. I don't think anyone can. I love how when Jesus was in the garden and he was praying to God, he was struggling because his flesh wanted to escape from that problem, that situation. He cried out to God, take this cup from me. Even Jesus, for one second, forgot. But he reminded himself why he's doing that. He said, no, no. I'm going to go through this. I know why I'm here. I know what this can do for the world. That day he went to the cross was the day we were free. Amen. Without his sacrifice, we'd still be in bondage. We'd still be struggling. You think the world's bad now? Can you imagine what the world would be like if he didn't go to the cross? Can you imagine? It would be hell on earth. Yeah. 
Because if he didn't go to the cross, that means what? That means the devil would win. I want to go back to the beginning for a moment. When it said that he wasn't beautiful. He didn't look glorious. But God had a mighty plan through him. It makes me think kind of of many pastors. Me, myself. <laughs> Carol Bell explained, my life was hell. I was on drugs. I was in prisons. I was on alcohol, in gangs. But I stand before you today doing his will because he sought me worthy enough to do his work. That's the same with Jesus. He didn't look beautiful. Sometimes we look at people and we think, that person's wrong. That person has problems. But, if you look again, don't look at what you can see. Look at what you can't see. We're all made in the image of Jesus. So if you feel that person's not good enough, not worthy enough, does that mean you think Jesus isn't worthy enough? You have to second guess, guess yourself sometimes. Show the love of Christ. He showed you so much love on that cross. So much. Why can't we show just a little bit of the love he showed on that cross? Just a little bit. And as life goes on and on and we show more love and more love, that's all this world needs is love. When I was struggling, I didn't love myself. I didn't feel people could love me. Many people struggling right now with drugs and alcohol, they just want somebody to love them. Someone to show them that they're there for them. Even prostitutes. Right now, the reason they do what they do, they just want to feel love. And they don't know where to find it. As a church, we've fallen short. God gave us a charge, a responsibility. I love the, the book of um, Isaiah. Such a great book. Chapter 61, verse 1 says, I have anointed you to proclaim the good news. It's talking about Jesus. But, but, it's not only talking about Jesus talking about all of us. He has anointed all of us, his believers, to proclaim his good news. But we fall short. We don't do enough. We forget. We're uncomfortable. I found out one month ago. Do you know what percent of deaf people are in church? Two percent. Two percent. That means there's 98 percent of death lost out there. We can't afford to forget. He said earlier, he's he's waiting. He's waiting to come. He's trying to give us more time. But we have to do something with that time. Jesus' ministry, he was alive for 33 years. His ministry didn't start till he was 30. He had three years to do what he had to do. How many years have we had and we've wasted? I myself, I'm 27 now. I finally am doing what God called me to do 
when I started to become 26. 26 years wasted. But that doesn't matter. Because what matters is right now. The same way what mattered before was that cross right there. Just like Jesus was crucified, we ourselves every day have to crucify ourselves. You wonder, what do you mean? I myself need to go on the cross? No, no. You have a flesh, sinful nature wants you to do wrong. You have to crucify that flesh like Jesus crucified himself every day. I myself every day. The old me is trying to fight back every day. He tries to get me to go back, tries to get me to forget. <clears throat> I can't do that. I can't afford to. I've seen his grace. I've seen his mercy. I've seen his love. I've seen his miracles. We wonder why today we don't see many miracles in USA. It's because we sometimes aren't hungry enough. You see it happen in other countries. Why? Because they're hungry. Yeah. They want something. They want love. They want something to take them out of their sin, take them out of their hurt. We're not hungry enough. We need to get on fire. That's what's important. You need to fill your oil up with God. With the Holy Spirit. Do we devote enough time to Him? Wake up. I have to cook breakfast. I have to get ready. I have to take a shower. I have to go to work. I don't have enough time for God. What if Jesus said he didn't have enough time to go to the cross? It's a must. Every day. Holy means set apart. Set apart. You need to find holy time every day to set apart from the world and be with God. Amen. To fill your oil. I'm not saying that time with God is going to make your life perfect, but it's going to give you strength to overcome those times when the devil comes and tries to bother you. We cannot forget. We have to remember every day when the feet hit the floor, say thank you. We can't forget me, myself. I can't allow the devil to get in my mind and let me forget what he's done. I can't. If you feel like if you feel like your situation I'm stuck. I have a problem. You can't fix it can't fix it. It's impossible. I'm stuck. I drink. I can't stop. I feel my mind. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I can't stop thinking that way. My back hurts. The doctors told me my back hurts. The doctor told me. Great physician. He died and rose again. Do you think fixing your back is impossible? He can make all things impossible and make it possible. But you can't forget that. You have to remember that. 
every time you say, I have a problem, it says in James 3, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So if you say, my back hurts, well, now the devil knows you believe it because it's a lie from the devil. So he's going to continue to push on your mind and push on your mind. You have to get free from that mind. You have to get free. You have to remember what Jesus can do. It's so important. There is no situation he can't fix, but you have to believe. Many people say the opposite of faith mm. is doubt. I say the opposite of faith is sight. Faith is what you can't see. So if you're trying to see something, then you're not believing what God can do. You have to look again. Don't look at the problem. Look to Jesus. Amen. I'm going to skip to the end of the chapter. Because Jesus looked death in the face and he didn't move, he took on his shoulders the sin of many. He took our problems all on himself. Searched for love for a long time. I rejected my family. I searched for love in the world, but I couldn't find it. No drug, no alcohol, no woman, nothing could satisfy my hunger for love. And if you want the truth, your family can't satisfy your hunger for love because that's human. It's not God. You want to be full? You want to feel peace? You want to feel something more you've never felt before? It's on that cross. It's on that cross. Every day, go to the feet of the cross. That's where you'll find your love. That's where you'll find your peace. You can't find a job? Go to your love. You have a sickness? Go to where you're loved. But we forget. We can't forget. We can't do it anymore. He's given us more than enough time to get it right. But we fail and we fail and we fail and we fail and we fail. And we fail. The time is right now. The time is today. I should be in prison right now. I'm serving seven to ten years. I shouldn't be here right now. The way the law works, the way my drug case was, I should be in prison right now. I cried out to him. I cried out. I 
was tired. I was hurt. I was broken. I had enough. I wanted love. I wanted peace. So I told him I'd give him my life if he gave me my life back. I told him open a door, anything. I walked through it. I was desperate. He opened up Team Challenge. But that was for a different charge. I still had seven to 10 years over my head. I went to Team Challenge and we prayed for that to be broken, but I doubted him. I said, it's impossible. It's impossible. How? I know how the law works. I know I'm going to prison. I know. No, I don't. He knew. Even though I doubted him, we still pray. May 27th of 2016, I was supposed to go to court in Chicago. I knew in my mind I was going to go to prison. I knew. Seven more years of my life gone. Away from family. I went to see my probation officer, and we prayed before I went. I said, oh well, Lord, if it's your will, and you want me to go to prison, I'm going to preach for you in prison. That's, that's all right with me. <laughs> A fax came through from Chicago that said they closed my court case. I didn't have to go see probation. I didn't have to go see the judge. God took that from me and closed it. How is that possible? Wow. Because of him. Only because of him. I explain that to you. Why? Because anything you have a problem with right now is not possible for him. Any body pains, sicknesses, money problems, it doesn't matter. All he wants you to do is believe. It's one thing to stand there and say, yeah, I believe, but in your heart, you don't believe it. Sounds good enough for me to say, yeah, I believe, but your heart doesn't leave with your mind. <laughs> you have to say, I believe, and believe in your heart, and know that he can do it, and he will take it away from you. today wishing you had come forward if you have a need if you have a problem tell them with your mind with your heart with your money with your family that's where you find peace it doesn't matter if the cross is not there. That's the cross. Jesus said to Martha at Lazarus' house, one thing is needed to be at his feet. I see churches today don't have an altar, don't use an altar. 
think that God is going to come and go to them. They think God is going to walk away and come to them. I don't have to do anything. God's going to do it all. He already did it all. Yes. He wants to see where your heart is. The walk from that seat to there is a walk of faith. But it's up to you to take that walk. If you don't walk, the devil win. But you don't realize the devil already lost. Already. God goes before you and fights you for you. And he's already won it. It's up to you. Jesus already went down, took the keys, and So why do you give the devil power over you? Today is the day to be free. To receive that free spirit. So I'm going to have a prayer. They want to come to open the altar. If you have any need, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's small or if it's big. He is able to do it. But you have to believe. You have to believe. Stop letting the devil win. Stop letting the devil feed lies into your mind. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't let him steal your mind. Don't let him steal your peace. It's not his to own. It's God. Every time I put it on, it's like, thank you. If you have a cross at home on the wall, every time you pass it, say, thank you. Straight to him. You who are 
Christians? Oh, how much we need to take that journey to the altar. How much we need that journey to the altar. Thank you, Lord. Now is the time. Now is the time. So, Daniel, what are you telling them to do? The altar's open. Come on. I'll pray with you. Yep. If you don't want someone to pray with you, that's fine. Come anyway. It's not for me to know what your problem is. It's for God to know. Right? Yes. And he already knows, but he wants you to yes. proclaim it to him. He gave you a mouth to use. Hands to sign. Don't ignore it. If you want to come to the altar, you can just come. Just feel free okay. to come. <coughs> remember, you're not coming to us. You're coming to the Lord. Yeah.